Hi, I'm Doug George, the Director of Hardware Engineering at Altai. Thank you for purchasing our A8 Super Wi-Fi Base Station. This video will show you how to install the A8 Super Wi-Fi Base Station along with the 5 GHz antenna for backhaul. We will then demonstrate how to wrap the RF cables with waterproof tape and power up the A8 Base Station. In this video we are going to use an A8 14 dBi directional antenna, an A8 main unit, a metal mounting plate which mounts the A8 main unit onto the pole, an antenna mounting kit which helps to mount the directional antennas onto the pole, a 5 GHz antenna, the PoE injector or power over Ethernet injector which powers up the A8 base station through an Ethernet cable. A waterproofing kit which contains an RJ45 waterproof connector kit and an AC power cable connector kit. Two pieces of 8 inch hose clamps. The Altai A8 is completely IP67 compliant and can withstand extreme weather conditions. You can see there are nine antenna ports altogether on the top of the base station unit. There are eight ports labeled as 1 to 8 and they are divided into four sectors. The two ports on every sector connect to a single antenna to provide cross-polarization diversity. At the back of the A8 main unit there are four metallic caps on each corner. These caps are for attaching the A8 onto the mounting plate. Please do not loosen or remove them. You can also see a label in the middle which contains the unit's serial number and MAC address. There are two warranty seals. Please do not remove these seals or your warranty will be void. At the bottom of the unit you can see an AC power supply port and an Ethernet port. You can power up the A8 unit through the Ethernet port via a PoE injector. There is also a mini USB port for maintenance purposes. This screw is for grounding or earthing. The screw here should be connected to a good earth cable for grounding purposes. This connection is critical for maintaining good lightning and surge protection. In the following section, we will show you how to fix the antenna onto the pole. First, you have to adjust the height of the antenna on the pole from the ground level. Then, Adjust the mounting position on the antenna by loosening these screws and moving it up or down. Adjust the antenna tilt angle according to your required site coverage. It can be tilted up or down. As you can see on the grading scale, you can adjust it to a maximum of 30 degrees upward or downward. Now we will show you how to install the 5 GHz antenna. Use the mounting kit to install the 5 GHz antenna onto the pole. You can also tilt the 5 GHz antenna up or down to align it with the antenna at the other end of the backhaul link. In order to improve the waterproofing of the RF ports, we need a strip of 5 mm by 100 mm butyl rubber tape. Wrap all the A8 BTS RF ports with the butyl rubber tape.
Now, let's install the A8 main unit. We connect the A8 main unit and the antennas with this mounting plate and metal straps. First, install the mounting plate onto the pole with this metal strap. Then, mount the A8 unit onto the mounting plate with the four pins located on the back side. Finally, tighten up this screw to attach the A8 main unit to the mounting plate. In this part, we are going to connect the RF cables to the RF ports of the A8 main unit and the antennas. On the A8 main unit, there are eight ports labeled as 1 to 8, and they are divided into four sectors. They are Sector 0, Sector 1, Sector 2, and Sector 3. Now, we connect the antenna to their respective sectors. Please make sure all the RF cables and the connectors are completely dry before installation. Loosely connect all the RF cables first, then secure the RF cable bundle to the pole. Then tighten the RF connections. Remember that the left port of the antenna is always connected to an odd port number of the A8, and the right one is connected to an even port number. For the 5 GHz antenna, connect the RF cable to the A8 RF port A, which is used for wireless bridging. This labeled A, since it uses the 802.11a standard. By aligning this 5 GHz antenna with a remote device such that they are face to face, you can then create a wireless bridge. If you do not use this port, please remember to put a RF end termination on it in order to protect the port from water and dirt. After connecting one RF cable, you must wrap the RF cable with the sealing materials to ensure proper waterproofing. First, wrap the cable with electrical tape. This is to make removal of the waterproofing tape easier. Starting from the base of the RF port with one loop, overlap the tape to half width. The tape should cover the cable connector body and extend 25 mm above the connector clamping nut. Next, wrap the cable with the rubber tape in a similar fashion as the first layer. Finish the wrap at 25 mm above the electrical tape. Make sure that the cable connector to the RF port junction is tightly sealed. Press the tape against the cabled connector body and the RF port. Finally, wrap the cable again with electrical tape for UV protection until it is about 25 mm above the butyl rubber tape. Wrap the connector at the antenna end with three layers of tape in a similar manner. After going through the above steps, we can now power up the A8 base station. There are two ways to power up the base station. You can either use the PoE injector, power over Ethernet injector, or a separate AC power cord which has a weatherproof connection. If you use the PoE injector, a straight cable and not a crossover cable must be used to connect the Ethernet port and the PoE injector's APBR output port. A weatherproof kit is necessary for the Ethernet connector cable if the A8 main unit is installed in an outdoor environment. Plug in the Ethernet cable into the A8 Ethernet port. The power LED will be on as soon as you plug it in. Then, connect the port labeled Enet Input with your computer or network switch. The activity LED will show the data link status. The Ethernet cable should not be longer than 100 meters as measured from the switch or computer to the A8, not only measured from the PoE injector unit to the A8. This means it must include the length of Ethernet cables on both sides of the PoE injector unit. This is the hardware reset button for resetting the A8 to a factory default configuration. To reset the A8 base station, press and hold the button for not less than 5 seconds. The power LED will flash twice to indicate the factory default configuration has been loaded. You can release the reset button as soon as you see the two flashes. You can also use a standalone AC power cord to power the A8. 
After plugging in the AC power cord, the power LED will be on. The activity LED will also blink and show the status of Ethernet transmission once you have an Ethernet connection. Thank you for watching this installation training video. We hope you enjoy our Altai A8 Super Wi-Fi base station.